Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is part three of our edu educational podcast series on structures with histopathologic correlations. My name is Ralph Brown from Zurich in Switzerland. In the previous parts, we've been covering criteria for melanocytic lesions, and we've been covering pigment networks, structureless areas, dots and globules. And in this podcast, in the part three, we're going to cover the radial streaming, pseudopods, streaks, blotches, blue-white whale, and granularity. Pseudopods are finger-like projections of dark pigment, usually brown to black color, found at the periphery of a lesion. They might have small knobs at their tips. Histopathologically, they correspond to confluent radial nests of melanocytes in the epidermis or the dermoepidermal junction. In this picture, from a publication of Menzies et al. from 1996, we see what a true pseudopod should look like from a pure morphologic point of view. In part A, we see the typical finger-like projection with the enlarged knob at the tip looking like a tennis racket. In B, this corresponds as well to a true pseudopod. It looks rather like a ping-pong racket. And in C, we see that triangular-shaped ping-pong racket. So all of these are considered to be true pseudopods. In D, we see what we call a peripheral globule. This does not correspond to what we call a pseudopod. Here you have the clinical picture of a rather large size melanoma. So from the left to the right, we have 7.8 millimeters. And if we look with the dermatoscope at the lower part and this area here, what we're going to see is multiple pseudopods throughout the entire periphery, very irregular in size and shape and color. So these are true pseudopods found in this melanoma. Another case of a melanoma in situ, where on the left side you have the dysplastic nevus with the globular architecture, but on the right upper part you see in the periphery these dark brown pseudopods, here at higher power, these tennis records and the upper right part. Another case of a melanoma clinically, dermoscopically, we see light brown color variable shades, we see irregular pigment network, irregular dots and globules, but if we focus on the lower part, we see in the lower area at 6 o'clock a multitude of pseudopods. At higher power, we can appreciate them even better. This is the histopathological correlation courtesy of Professor Menzies from Sydney, and what you see is this horizontal, confluent nests of atypical melanocytes situated at the dermoepidermal junction. And at the periphery, towards the periphery, we have this larger nest corresponding to the pseudopod, to the knob of the pseudopod. So this is what it looks like in dermoscopy. This is what it looks like in histopathology. Why is it that we have a dermoscopy criterion which is very reliable, the pseudopod, and why are these pseudopods not used by histopathologists to make their diagnosis? Well, this is very simple. A pseudopod, you can only see them in a horizontal view. But remember, the pathologist is going to have a very focal vertical view. So depending on where the section goes through this structure, he won't be able to see it or he won't be able to see it. If the section goes through this area of the knob, he's just going to see around this structure in histopathology. So if his section goes through that area of the pseudopod, he's going to see a, a smaller circle. And if it crosses the pseudopod like this, he's going to see an oval structure. Only if his histopathological section goes all the way through the pseudopod, he's going to see the pseudopod. And since this is, even in Reed's nevi, statistically so unlikely to happen, they don't use this criterion, but they have as well these horizontal ne nests that they see in growing lesions. Radial streaming. These are radially and asymmetrically arranged parallel linear extensions at the periphery of a lesion. Histology shows confluent junctional nests of pigmented melanocytes. Case of a melanoma of a lower leg. Dermoscopy. You see these dark streaks oriented towards the periphery, especially in the right upper part of the lesion. In the center, you see again blue-white whale, irregular blotches, and atypical dots and globules. Streaks. 
Streaks are used for radial streaming and pseudopods together because they have the same histopathological correlation. Streaks can either be regular or irregular. Irregular streaks are uneven, unevenly distributed and then you see them usually in malignant melanoma or they can be regular and at this moment they are symmetrically radial arranged throughout the entire lesion and then you see them in pigmented spindle cell nevi, Reed's nevi or Spitz nevi. This is the case of a child clinically and here you see very nicely this starburst pattern with multiple pseudopods at the periphery and these radially arranged streaks symmetrically throughout the entire lesion. Pigmented Spitz nevus. Blotch or black lamella corresponds to a large concentration of melanin pigment throughout the epidermis and or dermis and because there's so much melanin pigment you visually obscure the underlying structures so you just see black. This is what we call blotch. The example of superficial spreading melanoma 0.8 millimeters. Here you have the dermoscopy of the same lesion and in the center, lower center of the lesion you see just black homogeneous structures. And this is what we call a blotch. Histopathologically, you see melanin pigment throughout the epidermis and filling out the stratum corneum. Blue-white veil is an irregular, indistinct, confluent blue pigmentation overlying with a white ground glass haze. This pigmentation does not occupy the entire lesion. Histopathologically, it corresponds to an aggregation of heavily pigmented cells or a melanin in the dermis, and this is why it has the blue color, in combination, and this distinguishes it from blue nevi, with compact orthokeratosis. Here you have a clinical picture of a melanoma. Here's the, dem the demoscopy picture. You see this bluish, indistinct, irregular pigmentation not filling out the entire lesion with an overlaying ground glass haze and an atypical blotch and atypical pigment network at the right side. When we took a, take a look at the histology, we see atypical cells throughout the dermis. This is why we have the blue color. And at higher power, we see this all compact orthokeratosis on top of the lesion in the epidermis in the stratum corneum. In a blue nevus, this is different. We see as well a bluish pigmentation, but this time it fills out the entire lesion and it doesn't have that ground glass haze. Peppering is what we call when we have a white scar-like depigmentation, lighter than the surrounding skin, speckled multiple blue-gray granules. Histopathologically, this is seen in association with regression. That means fibrosis and melanosis. This is a case of a regressive melanoma, courtesy of Dr. Robinowitz from South Florida. And dermoscopically, we see the peppering very irregular throughout the lesion. So it's more than 50% of the lesion, it's associated with white and red color, and it's irregularly distributed throughout the lesion. So again at higher power you see the white scar-like depigmentation with these gray melanin dots at the periphery. Histopathologically this corresponds, again blue-gray means melanin pigment in the dermis, and usually this is in melanophages within the dermis as it's been seen here. So in this podcast we covered now the melanocytic lesion and the histopathologic correlation of the structures seen in melanocytic lesions.